بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His entire household, all his companions May Allah bless them all and may he bless every single one of us And may he bless our offspring those to come up to the end of time Amin my brothers and sisters in Islam, we know that as Muslimin, we have duties unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has placed upon our shoulders obligations. And at the same time, He has restricted us from certain things and prohibited certain things. And I'm sure every single one of us tries our best to adopt the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm sure that as time passes, we become more and more conscious of our duty unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes when we are young, we don't realize the purpose of life. As we grow a little bit older, we begin to look into why we are alive. We see sometimes our friends, our compatriots, our colleagues, perhaps passing on into the akhirah. It shakes us up. It wakes us up a little bit. It makes us realize that we too will become maybe old one day or we might leave going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even earlier. And what that does to us is it gives us what is known as a wake up call. And that makes us ask questions and it makes us want to get closer to our maker. This is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes certain things happen around us in a way that he constantly reminds us, I exist. You are going to return to me. This is the reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prepare for the day that you are going to come back to me. There is a time when you are young, you are bubbling with energy and perhaps you might forget that. So things keep on happening that are not to our liking sometimes. We suffer a loss, we suffer health problems, we have certain things that happen to us that will then make us realize. This in fact is a gift of Allah. Why is it a gift? Because we become in a position where we are far more prepared to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than had that thing not happened, subhanallah. So this is why when something negative occurs, when a person passes on who was closer to us, as much as we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we turn to Him, we become people whose hearts are softened once again. We need to understand that it is a gift as well. Because without that, sometimes we continue in our ways and habits and we would not like to be caught unaware when death comes to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a death wherein He is pleased with us for indeed that is the best death possible. Like we've said before, and I repeat it, the best death possible is that where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you, no matter how you go. So one of the greatest ways of achieving the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be conscious of Him and to try and remind yourself every time that I need to fulfill my obligations unto Allah and to try and look into wherever we have faulted and correct ourselves. Now, one of the great gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well is that He has not kept every day the same in virtue. He has not kept every moment of the day same in virtue. So you will find from the 12 months of the year, there is the month of Ramadan, which is the most blessed month. There is the night of decree known as Laylatul Qadr, which is the most blessed night. There are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. We are in them right now. The most blessed days. So Ramadan would have the most blessed nights and Dhul Hijjah would have the most blessed days. We need to understand this. From the week, we have a Friday that is actually the highest or the most high in value, in spiritual value. This is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we have, for example, the 10th of Muharram known as Ashura. What a powerful day. It is a day that Allah has raised in virtue from other days. Now this, if we take a careful look at it, 
It's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it softens us. It softens us completely. You know, I can give you an example, seeing that in this country, mashallah, we go through quite a bit of economic hardship. And I'm sure every single one of us knows what it feels like when the days are not as they were a time back. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them easy for us once again. If I were to tell you, brother, you have always been talking about traveling, for example, to Mecca. And do you know what? The tickets are very, very cheap. They are going at 10% of the price or 50% of the price. What would you do? You'd scratch your head. You'd go, you'd start talking to people. You would find out and perhaps you would make a buy. You would make a deal. You would want to go and you will then pay for it in advance and say, wow, tell everyone I got a very good deal because the tickets were on sale. This is just an example. But if we draw it to what I've been saying just now, and that is the mercy of Allah, there are seasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us similar in a similar way where forgiveness is on sale. Literally, there is a greater chance for your du'as to be answered. The fact that Allah has made you and I in need of him, we call out to him. That's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I did not have any needs, I would perhaps not even understand who my maker was because I would think I've got good health, I've got wealth, I've got everything moving, the people around me are living forever and so on. But it's Allah's plan that to tap you, He tells you come. And then when He says come, He gives you a Friday, subhanAllah, to say this is a most blessed day. Don't you feel the spirituality as a believer on a Friday? You get up early morning, you have your bath, you read your Salatul Fajr or you bath after Salatul Fajr, you get ready. The earlier you come for Salatul Jumu'ah to the masjid, the better you feel. Wallahi, it's a fact. Can I tell you why? The reason is the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu says, every Friday there is a competition that takes place. The angels stand at the doors of the masajid, the houses of Allah. They are writing down who came first, who came second, who came third. So basically I might have been 40th, 50th, I can do better next time. But we as believers sometimes might not realize that there is a competition going on, but we will feel it if we come first. We will feel it if we come, you know, top 10, so to speak. So make an effort to come earlier on a Friday. Give it importance because Allah has given it importance. Like the hadith says, خَيْرُ يَوْمٍ طَلَعَتْ فِيهِ shams. It is the best day of the week that the sun has risen upon. It is the day that Adam alayhi salam was created, a Friday. And it is a day that Qiyamah will happen upon. It is a Friday and so on. So many things are made mention of. So it's a blessed day. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this day. But within this day, there is definitely one moment. You know, the term sa'ah is used in the Arabic language. Sa'ah actually means time or it means the hour, an hour. So let's just say it's an hour. A certain hour in the day of every Friday is such that if you call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in that moment, you will definitely get what you've asked for, for as long as it does not have sin or something evil in it. You'll get it. So this is why, like we normally tell people, start asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the morning, repeat the same dua every, every little while, continue right to the end of the day and see what happens. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. If a person is really desperate, they will do that because they know that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us there is an hour on a Friday, the dua is accepted. But what if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to tell you that, you know what, there is another season that I will provide you as well. Another time, let's make mention of a different time that happens every single day. Or should I say every night? That is the time known as that of tahajjud. The time, the last third of the night or the earliest part of the morning before the time of fajr kicks in. There is a time known as the time of tahajjud wherein subhana rabbi al-a'la. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends he calls out, is there anyone asking me? I can give him. Is there anyone who has a need I can fulfill? Is there anyone who wants anything? Anyone seeking forgiveness? I will forgive them. Amazing. This is Allah calling us, yet he does not need us. We need him. So how many of us would get up at that time of the morning and call out to Allah, Oh Allah, I am your servant. Nobody said it is compulsory to read tahajjud. Tahajjud is a prayer that is definitely highly encouraged. It's something you should be doing. But even if you have, you know, had a little bit of laziness, for example, may Allah protect us from laziness, at least 
sit up in your bed or even whilst you're lying down in your bed, call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him what you want because he is calling out to you saying, what do you want? But it's that time of the morning. You need to forsake your sleep, my brothers and sisters. It's blessed. And you and I know when we have a problem and the problem is compounded or made huge and more difficult, we then get up for tahajjud. Come what may, we will get up. Why? Because we know it's a blessed time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand that those problems and difficulties that have brought you closer to Allah are actually not problems. They are not difficulties. They are a gift of Allah for you, tailor-made to bring you, to steer you from the wrong path to the right path. That's the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So similarly, we have these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. They are the days of Worshipping Allah in a beautiful way. He multiplies the reward of those who do any act of worship during this season, these 10 days. You see, when it comes to Ramadan, it's multiplied as well. And after the 30 days or 29 days, the entire month, he gives you a day of Eid. So here, after 10 days or the first nine days, the 10th one is a day of Eid and it extends into the 11th and the 12th. Amazing. So the more we worship Allah, the more we will feel the blessedness of the day of Eid. And this is what I'd like to call you towards. Our Eid, inshallah, we will be witnessing it in, the, in a few days. But what is of importance, if you want to taste the sweetness of your Eid, you need to make resolutions and you need to make peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to change your ways and habits. You need to become a better person. You need to sacrifice. It is not enough to say, oh, we are cutting one cow. We are cutting, for example, one sheep and we've got such a beautiful one. You should see it. And we take pictures of it and we put them up on our profiles and whatnot. That was our animal. And so yet we don't get up for salah. We don't want to dress appropriately. We don't want to stop lying and cheating and deceiving and so on. If that's the case, what was the point of just slicing an animal? You could have perhaps did something else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. This is why Allah says in the Quran, the meat does not get to Allah. The blood of the sacrificial animal does not get to Allah. But it is the piety, the consciousness that reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How did it change you? How did it move you? What did you do? What did you sacrifice? It's easy to know the history of Ibrahim alayhi salam sacrifice, but it is not easy to apply it and implement it and to look at it, how it applies to me. He obeyed an instruction of Allah that would never ever make sense to any one of us. Have you thought of that? Allah instructed him to do something that did not make sense, not even to him. But the fact that he knew it came from a certain source and that is my maker. He said, I'm going to adopt it with us. Let's be honest. The instructions of Allah to us are not on that level. They are such that we understand. Mostly we understand why this is being said. But still we find ourselves weak. So Allah says, I love you so much. I will give you reminders upon reminders. You see the Eid, one of the meanings of Eid, obviously a day of happiness, it would mean to recur, to repeat that which comes back every year. Eid, Ada Ya'udu, it comes back every single year and so on. So it's one of the meanings of the term Eid. The other ones connected to happiness and so on. However, my brothers and sisters, how many Eids have we seen in our lives? How many animals have we sacrificed in our lives? If that has made us slice our bad habits, put a knife to our bad habits and encouraged us to obey other instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have succeeded. But if that has just made us say, oh wow, the meat was good, this was nice, we served so many people, we did this, we did that, we've achieved absolutely nothing. To be honest with you, it will keep on happening every year in that way and we wouldn't have achieved. So my plea to yourselves, myself as well, let us make this Eid an Eid with a difference where we have turned to Allah. We seek His forgiveness. The times of dua are different in terms of acceptance. Not every moment of the day is the same. Not every day of the week is the same. We will have, inshallah, today we have a Jumu'ah. 
The hajis are in Arafah. We will be making dua. Tomorrow for us is the ninth of Dhul Hijjah. We will be making even extra dua. We've been blessed to be given another day. And at the same time, when we celebrate our Eid on the Sunday, it will still be so great that Allah has blessed us with an early morning, subhanallah. You get up, you thank Allah, you s- sacrifice your animal, and at the same time, you meet your family. It's a clean day, full of cleanliness. You have good clothes, just like we'd like to see ourselves looking so smart. Neat in your heart, smart in your heart. You know, subhanallah, what's the point of having such beautiful clothing? But the heart, if one was able to look at it, is dirty and filthy. And subhanallah, no one would like to look in its direction. That's not it. Believe me, if we have good character, good conduct, we purify ourselves, we reach out to others, inshallah, even if our clothing is slightly tatty, people will love us. They will look at us. They will respect us. They will love us in a way that we would feel a part of the community. A part of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make that easy for us. If you take a look at the importance of reaching out to fellow human beings, you will find it even in this udhiya or what we term qurbani. Do you know that the meat should be divided into three? It's a sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Divided into some portions. You may eat from it and you give a portion to your friends and family, and a portion you give it out for charity. Why? Because it shows you and I that it's not enough for me to just read my salah and for me to just, you know, do whatever I have to in terms of reading the Quran and tilawa and doing my own things with my dhikr. And then when it comes to my relationship with fellow human beings, I am a person whom no one wants to talk to because my mouth is so, you know, smelly, if I can put it that way, or the words I use are harsh and hard. If that's the case, What is the point of calling yourself a Muslim? Islam is a holistic religion. It covers every aspect of your life and it covers every aspect of mine. So in the same way that it would not be enough for me to say I read Salah five times a day in the masjid, in the first saf, and I don't miss Takbiratul Ihram, but I am bad to the rest of the people, it would also be wrong for me to sacrifice an animal and eat all the meat. If it was all about, you know, myself and having the meat, Allah would say, okay, sacrifice it and enjoy it. But Allah says, no, you must reach out to the poor. Go and look for them. Go and hunt for them. Go and see who they are. Go and give them or make someone responsible to do that on your behalf. Make sure the meat gets to those who are underprivileged. Why? Because it shows you Islam is not all about yourself. No. It's not all about yourself. We are an ummah. We are a part of one major family. Let's reach out to one another. Similarly, when we make dua, when we supplicate, asking Allah, do not be selfish in your prayer. Make dua for others. Lots of people, sometimes we have a person whom we don't get along with, for example. And what would happen if we keep on cursing them and we keep on making prayers that are hard and harsh? Perhaps they might go further away from us. Try making a blessed dua. Try saying, oh Allah, help this person, bless them, you know, soften their heart, create goodness, help them in their families, in their businesses and so on. Make dua for others. One of the bonuses of doing that is the angels make a similar dua for you. Whenever you call out for someone else, the angels are making the same dua for you. So it's something that is a bonus. I'd rather make dua for you than myself. When I know that if I make a dua for you, the angels are going to say, and oh Allah, grant this person the same. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from selfish selfishness so these days are days where yes we will correct ourselves we will improve our own bad habits we will improve our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but at the same time we will reach out to others we will ensure that we have made dua for them we have felt the the hurt that the rest of the ummah is feeling to be honest there is chaos on the globe at the moment especially in Muslim lands and it is our duty to pray for them it is our duty to pray for them really no one would like to see chaos no one would like to see things that are happening where people are dying no matter what so this is why it's important for us to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us and to use these beautiful days to turn to Allah brothers and sisters I end on one note this might be the last Eid that you are going to see It might be the last Eid that I am going to see. (coughs) Let's make sure that we've made resolutions. We've turned to Allah. We've cut our bad habits as much as we can. Wherever we faltered due to human nature or human weakness, let's turn to Allah immediately in repentance and forgiveness. He will forgive. He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. 
I have no option but to hope in the mercy of Allah. The day I go, the day you go, you have no option but to hope in Allah's mercy. That's all. And that is so great. It is something that will keep us smiling even on our deathbed because we know we are returning to Rabbun Ghafoor, a, a Rabb, a Lord who is so merciful. May Allah have mercy upon us. May He grant us all paradise and may He make it easy for us to, to, to enter paradise.